What's going on guys, it's Omniarch and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be talking about the state of optic gaming and when will this esports bubble finally burst. Now before I jump into the topic of the video, I just wanted to say thank you guys to everyone who's been tuning into my latest live streams and supporting my latest uploads. As you guys can tell, I'm trying to get back into gaming, trying to get back into content creation and making, you know, doing live streams and things like that. Um, so really huge shout out to you guys. If you haven't watched my content in a while, um, I really, really would love it if you guys could go and follow me on Instagram and on Twitter and as well uh, follow me on Twitch because right now YouTube is not sending my videos to sub boxes to 99% of my viewers because I've been so inconsistent and so inactive over the last like two years at this point. Um, so yeah, you guys probably aren't seeing my videos very much. Um, so with that being said, if you want, click the bell, so you, the bell, the bill, turn on, uh, turn on the bell. Uh, so that way, you know, next time I upload, but if you don't want to do that, I totally get that. Uh, just go ahead and follow me on social media. That way, you know, the next time that I stream, post a video or post updates to whatever social media platform. With that being said, let's ignore the fact that I need a haircut really, really badly. And let's talk about uh, the immortals complete infinite buyout. So essentially, um, the other day, immortals completed their buyout of infinite esports. And if you guys didn't know, optic gaming was purchased by infinite esports a couple of years ago uh so the past few weeks i've been keeping an eye on this story and a lot of people have had like they're, they're holding their breath waiting to see what happens um essentially infinite purchased optic gaming optic gaming has since tanked because they have run the the, the brand like complete garbage they had no idea how to run the business shame on them um so essentially infinite doesn't know how to do business and now they are selling out to immortals uh hector actually optic hex uh, actually put in a bid to purchase optic gaming back from infinite uh but it looks like immortal uh, infinite went ahead and took the bid from immortals instead at this point we don't really know what's going to happen happen to optic gaming the brand the call of duty team and all of that we're not really sure um we, we don't know what immortals is planning to do with optic gaming at this time um obviously there's a lot of other things that they purchased along with optic gaming like they bought infinite as a whole um, so they got a lot of stuff to, to figure out at this point. So we don't know what's going to happen to optic, but I wanted to talk a little bit about, and I think this is a good time to talk about this. What is going on in esports? And you know, are we seeing a bubble? Are we seeing an esports bubble? Um, you guys might not be familiar with that term. Uh, you may have heard of like the housing bubble, right? From 2008, it, the, the term bubble is an, econo an economic term uh, that is used when the prices of some sort of commodity or some sort of investment become so inflated that it's clear that it's gotten to a point where the amount of money being put into that certain uh, investment or industry or whatever the case is, it, the industry, it's, it's not worth as much as people are spending on it, right? And from the outside looking in, it's getting to be pretty obvious. From the inside, uh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty clear uh, that esports is in a massive bubble right now. And I want to talk about that. So in 2008, we saw a giant recession because of the housing market bubble. Essentially, the prices of ho homes were, were going up and up and up because everybody was being approved for loans. So everyone could purchase a house. And with the demand going up, so does the price. That's basic supply and demand. If you look on the supply and demand graph, as price or as uh, demand goes up, then you know you're gonna have a higher price. So at some point the bubble cannot sustain itself and it collapses and that point happens when people start to realize that oh my god these homes are not worth what they are being sold for so in in some instances you could say okay well in 2005 this home was sold for a hundred thousand dollars and in 2007 now it's selling for three hundred fifty thousand dollars and nothing has changed in those two years clearly it's overpriced the same thing is happening with esports right now and this is the reason why hector had to sell optic gaming to infinite in the first place we would not be in this position today if there wasn't a massive bubble in esports and what by that i mean player salaries are way higher than they actually should be for a lot of different esports and you know you might be saying well you know these guys are superstars they're streaming for thousands of people they're bringing a lot of ad revenue you know they're promoting different products they have brand deals and sponsors sponsorships and things like that and what i'm telling you guys is some of these players you know some of their events only get you know eight 
10,000 live viewers when they're playing big events, right? We're looking at things like CSGO, um, Halo, there's Call of Duty, obviously, there's League of Legends. Some of these esports uh, don't really pull that much weight, right? Like, like yeah, they, these are the people at the top of their esport, and they're only pulling in eight, ten thousand 10,000 views. That's not that many people, especially when you can consider how many eyeballs you can get on a product if an influencer is, is promoting that product or if that product were simply to just buy Facebook ads or Instagram ads themselves. The amount of money that sponsors are putting into esports right now, they're not going to see that back just based on how few people are watching these live esports events right we're, we're seeing gigantic companies funnel millions of dollars into esports right now and esports is not worth the amount of money that is being funneled in and you might say okay well it's an upfront cost which yes that is true there are always upfront costs when it comes to growing an industry and growing a business but if you start to push all of these funds into a very small industry what's going to happen is people are no longer going to want to invest in that industry because the people who did it initially lost all of their money right so if we start to see you know a company a is paying you know an esports team x amount of millions of dollars for a sponsorship for a year or whatever the like two years five years whatever the case is and then we see you know uh, another company now they have to bid 1.1 million to get another sponsorship with them and right these are all examples i don't know full numbers after a couple of years you know these companies are going to say hey look we only made you know three hundred thousand dollars off of your fan base like and at that point the price is so inflated that now no more companies want to invest in esports no more companies want to touch it because they think that it's not worth it right and then everything collapses uh and that is the state of esports that we're in right now and some of you guys might not believe me right now right some of you guys may be thinking look you're just talking theory you don't know what you're talking about esports is huge let's take a look at this article that was posted in march of this year uh this is i'm reading this off of bloomberg.com comcast plans 50 million dollar esports arena in philadelphia no matter what esport you're watching those major events do not take place in philadelphia so we see this massive company we see comcast put all of this money 50 million dollars into an esports arena in a city that no esports are really happening right there's not that much going on in philadelphia in the world of esports we're seeing a lot of stuff happening in uh, california we've seen some stuff in texas but there's really not much happening in philadelphia and comcast is spending 50 million dollars i mean that's just a shot in the dark if i've ever seen one they have no idea there's no way they're making their money back there's no way esports is not worth 50 million dollars because people there's not that many people going to these events right yes you have world tournaments right the, the biggest tournaments of the world of, of the year for some of these uh esports right like league of legends right these tournaments pull massive massive crowds but it's once a year and there aren't that many esports as big as league of legends so what exactly are you going to do with a 50 million dollar esports arena in a city that people aren't going to esports for there's nothing you can do maybe once a year you'll have a giant turnout for one tournament but you're it's gonna take you 300 years to make back 50 million dollars off of a off of an esports arena right and like i said yes eventually eventually we will need 50 million dollar esports arenas right eventually that that could happen i totally see the future of esports is only up right we're only going up from here but the question is how fast are we going to hit that point and i i have to say you know when this bubble pops we are going to reach that point much much slower because esports there aren't going to be companies investing in esports for many many years if we see this bubble burst because of all these companies losing millions of dollars like this comcast is going to lose millions of dollars tens of millions of dollars on this investment and that's going to leave a sour taste in their mouth and everybody else that is considering investing in esports is going to see this and be like wow 
look at how much money they just lost esports cannot make money right now let's invest in something else and then we will see the growth of esports slow to just a trickle it's going to plateau for a long long time and i'm very scared for that because i'm in i love esports i'm into it right i want to see it grow um but all the money that's being invested in in esports right now is ludicrous it's ridiculous right these players are not pulling nearly as many views as some of the people on Instagram. There's just influencers on Instagram who get more live viewers than world tournaments for esports, right? It, it's really not that much. And yes, they are skilled They're at the top of their field. I get that. But we're talking about numbers and we're talking about marketing departments in big business. Are they willing to spend millions of dollars on esports when they could spend it somewhere where they're actually going to get their money back? The answer is no. And the problem is it's actually going to do damage to esports in the long run. One great example of that is teams can't afford to pay their players without giant investments. And this circles all the way back to the optic gaming situation that we find ourselves in. Hector was scared that he wouldn't be able to keep up with player salaries without outside investment because we're in a bubble. So at that point, he has no choice but to sell to Infinite. And what does Infinite do? They completely destroy the brand because they're just a big business with money. They have no idea how to run an esports business. They clearly don't. I mean, look, Infinite, they lost, right? They had to sell that's losing in business you lost infinite lost right they didn't know how to run optic every single thing that hector said every single thing that hitch said everything on the inside they won right they were correct hector was right hitch was right all of the guys on the inside saying hey look this is how we should do it infinite ignored them and now they lost infinite esports lost immortal has now immortals have now purchased infinite and optic and unfortunately we may see the biggest call one one of two gigantic call of duty teams get just evaporate just disappear in in a matter of weeks when it took 10 plus years to build it to that point we might see you know a cornerstone of call of duty esports just evaporate immediately um just because of this gigantic esports bubble and the position that hector was kind of forced to be in now, I want to clarify a few things. Um, I don't think the esports bubble is the only reason that Optic is in the position that it's in. I think it was the 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 invisible hand that pushed Hector into into a corner, and he was forced to look for investors. Right. Um, I think that the contract that he ended up signing and taking with Infinite didn't go in his favor. Right. He should have had way more control over what was going on at Optic, and you know. I think even he would admit that if he was legally allowed to or maybe he will soon or in the future and i also don't think immortals would be stupid enough to just completely evaporate optic gaming right but what they will do is keep the logo and keep the name and they will probably gut it for what it they think is valuable and replace what it uh, what what it is with something else entirely and it will be nothing like the optic gaming that we've come to know and love to this day and essentially that is evaporating uh, evaporating optic right like you could say yeah the name and the logo are still there but with none of the people none of the passion uh none of the soul of optic it, it's just another esports team at that point it doesn't really matter what you call it um so i just want to make this video talking about uh kind of following up with the optic thing because i made a video the other day that actually got way more views than i thought so thank you guys so much for that for the support on that video um but i want so i wanted to follow up on that but i also wanted to talk about the esports bubble because i think a lot of you guys probably don't know much uh, about this right like this is the business side of esports not that many people are into the business side of esports but we are going to see very very bad things in the near future for esports i think within over the, over the next year or two um, we're gonna start to see re like very poor business decisions going around in esports and it's gonna be for millions of dollars and uh, a lot of people are gonna lose a lot of money in esports um, so we'll just have to see how it goes uh, hopefully you know there's not too much long-lasting damage um, but uh, at the moment I'm, I'm very upset with the current status of optic the good news is it seems like big timer and uh, all of the content creators for optic are probably going to start their own little thing and that is going to be really exciting um, I'm really excited to see what those guys do because again that's optic right like those guys are optic whether we say hey optic gaming was purchased like those are people and the people are optic so 
that's where the soul is that's where the passion is and i think the people are going to follow them and i'm really excited to see what happens in the future for those guys so keep an eye out um if you guys are watching you know if, if hit hitch and, and big timer you're watching add me to whatever content creator thing you're doing pick me real quick um with that being said guys thank you so much for watching make sure you drop a thumbs up on this video i'd really really appreciate it comment down below telling me what you think about this topic tell me what you think about the esports bubble or optic gaming or whatever the case might be um and that's about it guys so thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace